I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about volume by cylindrical shells. In problem number 17, we'd like to use the shell method to find the volume of the solid formed when the region bounded by y equals 4 minus x, y equals 2, and x equals 0 is revolved around the x-axis. Okay, so let's start out by drawing this uh, region that we're going to spin. I get y equals 4 minus x, which has a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of negative x. And then we get y equals 2, which is this line. This is y equals 2. This is y equals 4 minus x, and then finally we get x equals 0, which is just our y-axis, and so here's our little region that's bound. All right, so we want to uh, revolve that guy around the x-axis, which is right here, and when we do, we get some sort of a shape like this. Um, Okay, so we get a picture of what our shape is looking like. We can see, uh, in one sense, all the cross sections are washers, if we look at it one way. And so you might ask the question, well, can I just use the washer method? Uh, the answer is, uh, yeah, you can use the washer method. Unfortunately, this problem asks us to use the shell method, so I suppose we should do what we're told. Uh, so this guy is not... Uh, you can use the shell method, you can use the washer method, but once you've made a choice, that's going to affect whether you're using x's in your integral or y's in your integral, depending on how you're chopping it up. Now, if I want to chop this thing and make a shell, then what I would do is I would make a slice horizontally, spin that slice, and you see that I get a shell. All right, so once I see that I get a shell, I know I'm using the shell method, and am I chopping, when I make these horizontal cuts, am I cutting up the x-axis or the y-axis? In this case, it's the y-axis, so I need to integrate with respect to y. So if I want the volume here, I'm integrating from a y value to a y value. And I think it's clear here, I would start chopping at 2, and I would stop chopping when I got up here to 4. So I integrate from 2 to 4 of 2 pi times r. And if I'm sitting up here at some y value, then how far am I from the center of this shell? And in this case, it's also just y. The distance is y, that's the radius. And then I need the height of the typical shell. So if I'm sitting at y, the height is the top function minus the bottom function. Well, the bottom function is just zero, so it's just this functional value. But remember, I need y's, not x's. So I need to solve this equation for x, which would be that y minus 4 is minus x, or x is equal to 4 minus y. So my height, in this case, is 4 minus y. So I'll write that in as my height, 4 minus y, dy. And what I have is I'm integrating from a to b of 2 pi r h dy. Okay, let's integrate this. So let's, first of all, I'll pull out the 2 pi, and I have integral um, from 2 to 4 of 4y minus y squared dy. Let's take an antiderivative. If I do, I get this is 2 pi uh, times antiderivative of 4y would be 2y squared 
and the antiderivative of negative y squared is negative one-third y cubed. All of that's evaluated from two to four. Let's plug things in. We plug in the four first. I get two pi times. Now let's plug in four. I get four squared, which is 16 times two is 32. I get four cubed, which is 64 over three. So minus 64 thirds minus, now I plug in the two. Uh, two squared is four times two is eight and minus, plug in the two, I get eight thirds. <clears throat> now we just need to simplify this down a little bit and we'll be done. I get two pi times, I get 32 minus eight, that's 24. And then I get negative 64 thirds plus eight thirds. Uh, if I add 8 thirds, I suppose I get minus 56 thirds. Now I need to take 24 minus 56 thirds. I could rewrite 24 in thirds. And so let's see, what would that be? 72 thirds uh, minus 56 thirds which is uh, 72 minus 56 is 16. 16 times two is 32 pi over three. And that would be the volume of this shape that we get when we're, we revolve this little region about the x-axis.